How y'all doing? So we're back again with the next chapter of the Genesis Bible study series. Today we're going to be doing Genesis chapter 48. Once again, we'll be reading from the New King James Version. My name is Minister Devin Key. We also have Apostle Robert Miller as well. And, you know, just like we did with chapter 47, we're going to read the chapter. We're going to discuss a couple of points and we're just going to let God's spirit move. And um, definitely if you guys have any questions, comments or concerns, definitely leave them in the comment section. Um, share the video, like the video. It helps us get out to a wider audience. You know, I believe that God is doing a great work within our ministry and within our lives personally. And, you know, we just wanted to make sure that more and more people are hearing this message. Now, I know that God is going to increase it in his time as well. But I think if you guys have definitely been impacted by this, definitely share it to your friends and family or even to your timelines and just let it have that exposure that it needs as well. But um, without further ado, we're going to read chapter 48 to you guys. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Genesis chapter 48. The subtopic for chapter 48 is Jacob blesses Joseph's sons. And it says, now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed, your father is sick. And he took him, he took with him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then J Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at loose in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you and I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring whom you beget after them shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died besides me in the land of Canaan on the way when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, who are these? Joseph said to his father, they are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, please bring them to me and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact, God has also shown me your offspring. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand towards Israel's left hand and Manasseh with his left hand towards Israel's right hand and brought them near, near him. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn, and he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, let my name be named upon them and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now, when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, not so my father, uh, for this one is the firstborn, put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know my son, I know he also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day saying, by you Israel will bless saying, may God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he said, Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, behold, I am dying. 
but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow, my bow. Amen. 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 So Amen. even that one right there, that's definitely exciting, you know. Uh, um, we, I think I mentioned this like maybe two chapters ago. It might have been, been on chapter 46. But um, it's the fact that the same thing that happened with Esau and Jacob happening with Ephraim and Manasseh, right? So even though Isaac couldn't see, he didn't know what he was doing. Rachel had previously got a dream before they had the two boys when they, when they were two boys in the womb and the angel came to her and he said, surely there are two nations in your womb and they will be enemies. They'll be like warring against each other. However, the younger shall, I mean, he said the elder shall serve the younger. So it was always meant for Esau to be the lesser nation and for Jacob to be the greater nation. It just, she had to convince Isaac because Isaac, he didn't, he never got the dream. He, he somehow, you know, God, I guess God to do that sometimes, right? Sometimes he shows Mary something and then he speaks to Joseph so that Joseph can be in agreement. And sometimes he just showed it to Rachel, he showed it to Rachel, not Rachel, uh, Rebecca. He showed the dream to Rebecca. She knew that Jacob was supposed to get the blessing over Esau. Esau didn't know and Isaac didn't know. So she had to kind of trick him into doing it. But it wasn't a sin because she was following the purpose of God. Isaac just didn't want to do it because he liked Esau more than he liked Jacob. So she had to trick him into doing it. But it was God's purposes for the elder to serve the younger. And the same way with Ephraim and Manasseh, he says, even though Manasseh is the oldest child, he's going to be lesser than Ephraim. Ephraim is going to be the greater, the greater nation. The, the younger shall serve the elder. So it is what it is. But um, let's go with this first, um, this first point. And that is, and I think this is so important. This is powerful because it's two parts to this, right? And what I'm talking about is Manasseh and Ephraim, they're of mixed heritage, right? They're half Hebrew, but they're also half Egyptian. Because Joseph was a Hebrew and their, their, their mom was an Egyptian woman. So they're half Hebrew and they're half Egyptian, right? So they became as sons to Israel. Now, I want you to consider this. Jacob had 12 boys. He also had a girl that was named um, Dinah, right? We don't hear too much about her after the, the story that happened with Shechem. But he has 13 kids, 12 boys, right? Of these 12 boys... A couple of them is not going to make it to the end of Revelation. Once you get to the book of Revelation, a couple of those tribes, because of their own, you know, disobedience, idolatry, different things like that, they're removed from the inheritance in heaven. But he added Ephraim and Manasseh. So when you go to the book of Revelation, Ephraim and Manasseh are named amongst the promise. This is why he says, your son shall be like my son. He says, just like Reuben and Simeon, they shall be unto me. So my name is going to be among them. So when they say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 patriarchs, they're part of the 12 patriarchs. The tribe of Dan is no longer in the book of Revelation. They got crossed out. Right? So this is what happens when we're not obedient. But we're not, we're not getting into that too much. I'm just, I want you to guys see what, what Jacob is talking about when he's saying, your son should be like my sons. Basically, they got adopted into an inheritance. Because they could have stayed in Egypt and been the sons of their daughter, been the sons of their mother. And they would have had Egyptian heritage and they would have probably been enemies of God. They would have been two other enemy nations of God. But God saw fit for Israel to adopt the two boys. That's what he's saying right here. He says, even though these are your two boys and God birthed them to you, they shall be like my sons. So in the inheritance, they're not under you. They're under me. So they're not known as Joseph's sons anymore. They're known as Jacob's sons. So that is bad on Joseph, right? Because Joseph probably is like, well, this is what God gave to me. This is my inheritance. But for, for the boys, it's like, this is a greater inheritance. Because now you're part of the heritage of God. Just like Rahab, right? When Rahab let the Israelite spies stay in her house and she didn't call the people on them, God blessed Rahab. He took care of her family and he gave her a husband. Rahab became part of the tribe of Judah. He gave her a husband in the most powerful line of Israel. She's numbered amongst the, the, the um, ancestors of Jesus Christ because of her faithfulness. So God can turn anything around. He, like, it, it don't have to be an Israelite. You could be anybody. You could be from Germany. You could be from Russia. You could be from anywhere. If you have faith in God, he'll turn that thing around. 
And he will add your children and your grandma, your grandpa into the inheritance because of your faithfulness. So that we have to think about it that way as well. You know, we can't be so singular minded that this is how it's going to be my way or the highway. We have to give like literally crucify our own will to let God's will be our will. Because what if God's will is better for your children than what you have for them? Yeah, you got a little bit of money. Yeah, you got a little bit of fame. Like, let's just look at it from Joseph's perspective. Joseph got a little bit. He got some money. He got some integrity. He got some fame. But then his two boys are going to be Egyptian nations. And we know what's going to happen. So God is so, you know, God is so big. He knows. He knows that Egypt is going to turn against the Israelites. So instead of having two enemy nations that actually have Israelite blood, he just makes them a part of the inheritance of Jacob. So they, they, that doesn't even happen. See how that makes sense, right? So now he says, there is no distinction between Ephraim and Manasseh or Reuben and Simeon. So they get the same blessing as pure blood Hebrews, even though they're mixed race. Amen. I mean, some of us, like some of y'all, you know, you may be watching, you may be a child of adoption. You know, it could be any kind of situation where now you're being raised by white parents. They're not your parents. Everybody can see it. But you now have the inheritance of them because they took you in as a child. Same thing. You're, ne you're never with their inheritance as opposed to inheritance of your, your true mother and father who probably didn't have much. Even though you may feel like, you know, I may feel small. I may feel like I don't belong. Look at it from the whole, the bigger picture. You have access to opportunities. You have access to resources. And, and I, I'm not trying to get into a race debate or anything like that, but I'm just saying, like, there's more to it if we stop looking at it as far as race and, and all this other stuff, these, these small arguments. You have access to resources, better schooling, right? Um, just, it, just, it's just different. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to try to build up certain, certain things over other things, but looking at it from Ephraim and Manasseh, some people have that kind of situation. You know, some people, mother and father was on drugs. And you would rather be raised by a drug addict or someone who is not a drug addict. That's a better inheritance, right? As opposed to probably being abused and treated wrong. So it's just, it's, it's like, it's apples and oranges. So even though it, it's probably bad on Joseph, because I don't think Joseph had any more kids after this. So he didn't technically, he, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, he don't have any more kids, but it's better for his kids. It's better for my kids to go with you and experience the blessing of God than to be with me, who I've been in Egypt all this time. Even though Joseph is a Hebrew by birth, he's pretty much an Egyptian now. So his, his, his kids went from Egyptian heritage to Israelite heritage. And that I think that's the biggest point about all this. Anything you want to um, discuss with that or add to that or anything? Yeah. Um, I want to go back uh, to uh, where you spoke about, uh, well, you spoke about parents. parents. And so uh, I think you already alluded to it, but um, one point I was thinking about how as parents, we got to give our children to God, right? You know, and then, um, you know, because as a parent, we we have kids, especially when you have more than one kid, right? You know, a parent that has more than one kid, oftentimes we see this favoritism or the parent has ideas for one and might not have ideas for the other, right? Here in this text, context, uh, you know, of course, Joseph was, you know, sticking to tradition at the oldest be the first one, you know, receive the blessing and the, then the younger. And then um, Jacob, you know, here could represent God, you know, like how we, when we give our children to God, you know, if we have multiple kids, we may say like, for instance, they will always say my little brother was going to be the preacher. Right. It was like, because he used to pray all the time. He, man, it was, this little kid, all of us used to sit around the table. It's like, wow, little bro, I can't pray like little bro. Yeah. Little bro can't pray, you know what I'm saying? Um, and they was looking for him to, you know, be that. Whereas little bro feel called into some different, you know, he feels called more into the marketplace. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the expectation that the parent, my mom had on little brother, you know, is a little bit different. And then I ended up being the one. You know what I'm saying? So I just think, you know, when we give them to God, we trust God with what he's going to do in their life. You know, even here, he says, um, I know, son, he would still be great. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm letting you know what I see. Right. That, you know, God knows everything. Right. He knows who's going to do what. All right. He's not going to be limited. You know, he's still going to be uh, great. But 
who else was like that? Wasn't it um uh, Ishmael and um mm-hmm. yeah, Ishmael, Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac, yeah, Ishmael and Isaac, yeah, yeah, Ishmael, mm-hmm. you know, went off, you know, he had the uh, Abraham, of course, you know, the way well, he wasn't the son of the promise, so he had to, you know, let him let um, Hagar and, and Ishmael go, but still, yet God blessed Ishmael, right? He was still yeah. blessed. You know, he didn't lack, you know, he had, he had, he had a crew, big, big team of army of people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He was blessed. Uh, even um, Jacob and Esau, Jacob yep. and Esau, right? Esau, you know, we would think, okay, Esau, now he could have had more, right? If he wouldn't have, you know, sold his birthright, but. Well, no, no, no. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. Right. Right. Because right. It, it, it was God's will. It was God's because will. when they were still in the womb. The angel spoke to Rebecca. He told him, you have two nations in your womb. Yeah. But the the elder shall serve the younger. Yeah. That's what the angel told her. So he had already prophesied over the two children before they even came out the womb. The elder shall serve the younger. So when Esau was born first, technically the firstborn, Jacob was already grabbing his heel. Jacob was on his butt already. Like, "Uh uh-uh, you ain't ain't beating me. We're going out together. We're going out together. Mm -mm, Nope. And what happened is God's will was accomplished, even though Jacob was a little bit different, right? Because you would think Esau would get the blessing. He was a hunter. He would kill animals. He would slay them. He would clean them, cut them, right? So that's more Israelite heritage than Jacob. Jacob wasn't a fighter. He was a lover. He was a lover boy. Yeah. But that's who God chose, just like he chose David over Saul. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, God chooses who he chooses, right? He won't choose. I say, that's a man after my own heart. I'm choosing David. Even though David yeah. had not fought nobody, all he ever done was take care of sheep. Yeah. But he had the heart of God. Yeah. Yeah. God turned him into a warrior. So God can take something that's small and turn him great. He yeah. turned David into a warrior, great warrior. Yeah. Amen. David expanded the borders of Israel a lot. He turned David into a great warrior. Mm-hmm. Right. But his other brothers were already soldiers. They were soldiers in the Israelite army. That's why he was visiting them when he went to Saul. He's like, hold on, who is this Philistine talking crazy about my God? He went there to give sandwiches to his brothers. Yeah. He didn't go there to fight. He went there to go to do an errand for his daddy. He says, go take go take sandwiches to your brother Eliab. Eliab was one of David's older brothers. But God's purpose has got to prevail. His there are many plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's God, purpose that will yeah. prevail. Amen. So Amen. David showed up and said, now I'm going to take down Goliath. And they even tried to talk him out of that. They're like, but hold on, man. You, you too small. You can't do that. He said, hold on. What shall a man get if they take down this Philistine? He said, well, he, gonna, he don't got to pay taxes. He don't got to pay taxes for the rest of his life. And the king will give him his, his daughter in marriage. He said, Ooh, I like that. Well, yeah. Let me go and do that then. Because I know I can win. Yeah. Amen, something else, bro. He said, oh, I, got, I can do that. Let me give me something. Give me something to work with. I got him. Let's do it. Hey, David, cool, bro. I love that. I yeah, love yeah. it. So, yeah. That's cool. Man. I love it. But yeah, man, God's purpose is gonna prevail, man. You don't yeah, all the time. Just just let God we, do his work. And we gotta be, you know, happy with God's purpose. You know, I think that that will be with you know getting to a place of God's contentment, right? You know, you know, God, you know, got something, you know, for you, you know, and 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 then that 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 way you don't compare yourself to your brothers, right? I'm speaking to somebody out there because I don't have people, you know, say. Look, you know, and they they won't support your gift because they don't see their own gift, right? They don't see God. God gave everybody a gift. God, all of us grace with something to do something. God has purpose for everybody to fulfill on the earth. It may be different from somebody else. That's even goes with the international country. I talked to some of them. Some of them are very content, you know, not not with their circumstance, but with God's will, right? They're content with God's will. It's like. It's like, okay, you because poverty may never change in some of those countries, but but some of those ministers uh you know are like, I'm God has me here, this is where I'm I'm at. I'm not trying to come to the States, you know, I'm not I'm I'm content with living here because God has me here for a purpose, you know, so they're content with that purpose. But then there are others that are looking and saying, you know, look at what you have and they comparing what you have, they think you're not grateful for what you have that God done bless you with because of their circumstance, you know, um, because they're comparing their circumstance. I see it. I'm dealing with that a little bit now, you know, it's like I can feel the weight of it. I'm like, okay, some of them, 
you know, if they see me walking around on camera talking to them and they see my house, some type of feelings stir up because they thinking I should have that, you know, uh, when we didn't choose as African-Americans to, you know, end up in America and all of that. It was yeah. God's purpose. It prevailed. So that's all I want to emphasize is that, you know, to be content with whatever God's will is, you know, to know that God's will, you know, if we start doing things for God's will and for God's purpose in our life, I believe if we get to that place in our mind, God will call, God will allow us to do greater than what we, what we even imagine. But yeah. if we're constantly comparing what we're doing to somebody else and we have these ill feelings towards them because they're doing it, you know what I'm saying? Then we need to check out our own hearts. God ain't going to bless you when your heart not right. You talked about the intention. You know, we got to have pure, pure intentions with, with this work because God is entrusting us, you know, for it to be all about him, you know, and not about us. So Amen. that's what I want to say. So my actual second point, it kind of relates to the first point, but it's just from a different perspective. So in the same way that we were just talking about what happened with Jacob and Esau, it happened with Isaac and Ishmael, and it also happened with Man Manasseh and Ephraim. If you look at all, all three of those situations, who did not know what was going on? That's a rhetorical question. But who did not know what was going on? When it came to Abraham, he had two children, Isaac and Ishmael. Sarah knew. She's like, no, God said, I'm going to have a child. You need to have faith in this, not that. He said, that ain't, that ain't what God told me. I prayed about it. And God said, no, you got to remove him. Sarah came in and said, no, you, they got to go. I, ta I talked to God. They got to go. So you need to handle that right now. She was she was very stern with Abraham. Like, I don't care what this, you going to, bro, don't play with me. God promised me a child. We're not doing that. She said, no, my child is going to get the inheritance. They not getting nothing. You better get them a body here. She was serious. This is real, right? So Abraham didn't know because Abraham has love for both children. He's like, that's my son. Why, why I got to do that? So he prayed to God and God said, uh-uh, do what your wife said. You heard her. Basically, what he said, he didn't say that in those words, but that's basically what he said. You heard her. You better get rid of him. And so God was backing up the wife. He said, mm -mm, she right. You should have did that. You should have did that. <laughs> and then the next situation, Jacob and Esau, right? Isaac really wanted to get a blessing to Esau because he loved Esau's soup. That's what the Bible says. It says Isaac loved Esau because of his soup and because he was like Isaac. Isaac was a shepherd, but Isaac went out and hunted. So he loved Esau because they had stuff in common. He didn't have nothing in common with Jacob. It, I don't think he hated Jacob, but they just didn't have nothing in common. How many of us can relate to that? You got a mother and father, but you more like your mother than you are like your father. Not in a feminine way, but you just don't have like, maybe your daddy plays sports and you don't play sports. You're more like a, 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 a mathematician or something. So y'all don't have nothing in common, so y'all not that close. So it's the same situation, same scenario. So when it comes to Esau and Jacob, the only person who didn't know what was going on was Isaac. Rebecca knew. She's like, uh-uh, God told me. Uh-uh, God told me what's going to happen. No, mm -mm. But Isaac didn't know. He left the fathers in the blind, in the darkness twice. Come to this situation. Ephraim and Manasseh. Same thing. Joseph don't know what's going on. He's like, hold on, daddy. He's the firstborn, daddy. Switch that up. And Jacob like, I know, son. I know what I'm doing. I know what's going on. But just like the previous two generations before you, you don't know what's going on. So each three times, the father didn't know what was happening. The father didn't want it to happen. The father wanted to give the blessing to the first child. That's what Abraham said. God, I ain't got no descendants. I guess my, my descendant going to be a slave in my own house. That's what he said to God. He had a little, pout, little pouty move going, man, God, I, you ain't give me nobody. I can't have no child. So I guess somebody's going to get my inheritance from my own house. And God said, Abraham, Man, go out, get me. You know what? Get up. Go outside and look at the stars and count them if you can. That's how many your descendants are going to be. You ain't finna have no descendant and you no know, slave. What are you talking about, Abraham? I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Right? And I'm not doing this to like talk down on Abraham. I'm just showing you that Abraham was, he, he wasn't in the right mindset. Like he didn't understand what God was doing. In the same way that Isaac didn't understand what God was doing with Jacob and Esau. In a similar way, Joseph didn't understand what God was doing with Ephraim and Manasseh. I don't know what the purpose is, but there has to be a reason why 
These three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, neither one of them seemed to, well, Jacob knew, but Joseph didn't, right? So they didn't know what God was doing with their children. They didn't know that the younger was going to serve the elder. They didn't know that. But it turned out the same way each three times. So, hey, you know, that's just what it is. But I think that's, I think that's something we can talk about, the fact that he left the fathers in the dark. He left the fathers in the dark. You're going to find out the day of, you know? Anything you want to add to that or, you know, comment on or something? No, man, that's good, man. All I could think about uh, with all of this you're saying was, man, God is God. <laughs> yeah. God is God, you know, and, 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 and his ways are higher than ours. He going to do, he going to do whatever it takes. You done said this on multiple teachings too. God's plan is going to prevail or whatever, whatever the case may be. That That's, just know that his his plan, his plan going to prevail. So we got to know that God is God. Amen. If you notice, my dog is climbing up on me. She's a little mm -hmm. friendly. Today. I don't know what's going on with her. Yeah, we see her doing a lot. <laughs> doing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so getting to this, um, this third point, and this is the final point I have for chapter 48. And it's that Israel, speaking of Jacob, he prophesied to Joseph that God would be with him. Right. So if we're looking at the end of, I think it's chapter 46, chapter 48. Uh, let's see. So he says, where is this? At? Let me make sure I get it for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK, so this is verse three. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. And I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. So he's prophesying to Joseph, right? So Israel prophesied to Joseph that God would be with him and cause him to return to the land of... Oh, so let me... I'm sorry. That was the first prophecy. Let me, let me get to the second one as well. So... Let's see, where is this at? So this is in verse 21, right? So verse 21, then Israel said to Joseph, behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of my Amor of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. Basically what he's saying is, so it's, it's, it's a lot that's going on in those last two verses. The first thing that's going on is this. Jacob is prophesying to Joseph. And you don't see the fulfillment of this prophecy to the end of Genesis. Because Joseph ends up dying and his bones is stuck in Egypt for hundreds of years. Until the Israelites leave Egypt in the Exodus with Moses. And what do they do? They gather up Joseph's bones and they take Joseph's bones back to the land of Canaan with him. So he could be buried amongst his fathers and his, his, his ancestors. But why did they do this? They did this because Jacob prophesied it hundreds of years before him. He says, God will be with you. He shall surely return you to your fathers. Now, Joseph never went back to Canaan alive. He sent his brothers to go get Jacob. He never went back to Canaan his whole life. He only returned back to Canaan in his death. So this was Jacob prophesying to Joseph. I know you in Egypt. I know you in a different heritage, but God will return you to us. But it just was going to happen after he died. So Israel was prophesying to Joseph that God will be with them and cause them to return to the land of his fathers. In addition to this, Joseph was given a double portion of the inheritance. So we just talked about Joseph getting all his favor. He got favor in this place, this place, this place, and this place. The favor still is, is still passing on. Because even when Jacob is about to die, he gives Joseph a double portion. Now, I want you to be very careful, though. He didn't give Joseph a, a double portion for himself. He gave Joseph a double portion because his two sons are now a part of the inheritance. So when you look at the revelation, three people belong to Joseph. Joseph has a portion in, I'm sorry. Joseph has a portion in the revelation inheritance. Manasseh has a portion in Ephraim. So that's why that happened, right? All of that is divided upon Joseph's house. But that just shows you the, the, the integrity of his household. They didn't turn away from God. Joseph's family line stayed true to God. And Manasseh's family line stayed true to God. Ephraim's family line stayed true to God. They all did. That's why they're numbered in the book of Revelation. 
So, I mean, you know, take that as you will, but I think that just shows you that the favor carried on. And you might even be able to say that the favor of Joseph caused God to do this with Manasseh and Ephraim. Because God know everything. He know what's going to happen. He know who's going to fall off and who's not going to be there. So he knew the tribe of Dan wasn't going to be much, much to nothing. You know, he knew that was going to happen. So he had already made provision for it. I'm going to put them as, as part of Jacob's son so that when them two fall off, he still got 12. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I got for chapter 48, unless you want to add to that or, you know, discuss that a little bit. Well, outside of that, you guys, um, definitely stay tuned to what we have going on next. Next time you see us, it'll probably be in the next couple of days or so. We'll be finishing up Genesis. We'll be doing chapters 49 and 50. And definitely stay. I got a good amount of points. Oh, it's going to be good. I got a good amount of points of 49 and 50, so it's going to be pretty fun. But um, and then we'll be getting into Exodus. I already have Exodus chapter one done. So we'll be getting into Exodus soon after that, too. So definitely stay tuned. We're just trying to we're really going to try to break down the Old Testament. Like I've been discussing and gift, definitely if you guys have any um, any suggestions, if you like, because when it comes to Leviticus, I don't want to do chapter by chapter because it's just laws and how to behave and stuff like that. I don't want to necessarily just be, it's going to be boring. So I'm thinking we could do like an overall summary video of Leviticus, like maybe like a little 10 minute clip and then get into, you know, numbers because numbers is where the story picks up again. You go from Genesis, Exodus, then you have a book of laws, then you come into numbers when it's like the Israelites and they're fighting against Moses, they're complaining and all and all that. And then you get into Deuteronomy, which is Deuteronomy is some story, but it's also Leviticus told all over again. So that's like them retelling the Ten Commandments and all that again. So we're going to have to like kind of navigate around that because we're not under the law, ladies and gentlemen. We're not under the law, so I don't want to put too much emphasis on the law. But I do want to be able to explain it to you so you can understand what is, it, what is the Levitical priesthood, what was the portion of it, why were God doing it, and what was their practices. But we're not trying to put any too much emphasis on that. So we're probably going to just make like a little summary clip about those two things. But our whole goal is to go through the whole Old Testament. So you're going to hear us talk about Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all these prophets. We're going to really get into it. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I definitely, if you guys are enjoying the content, definitely share it, like it, you know, um, let somebody else know about it. And we'll just continue to be faithful to what God has put in our hands. And um, definitely uh, be encouraged, be blessed, because... If God can do this in our lives, what can he do in your life? You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I didn't I didn't go to no seminary. You know, I, I didn't go to no seminary, bro. Like, I just started reading. I just started studying. Holy Spirit came upon me. He just started downloading something. It's like, man, this makes sense. And the more I, the more I stayed faithful and kept reading, he gave me more and more and more. That's why I like doing a chapter by chapter study, because I'm getting so much more than just reading it like as a book. If I just take my time to read it chapter by chapter, I get so many more details out of it. And I love doing this. Like, I like doing this because it's helping you, but I like doing it because it's helping me too. It's helping me to break down stuff chapter by chapter. My, oh, this is, it's so much in it that you skip by. You just skip over it because you don't think about it. You know, we just learned so much about Joseph that we didn't know. Because all we know is that Joseph had integrity and God blessed him. It's so much more than that. It's so much more in Joseph's story. We don't talk about so much stuff, man. I just, I think it's a blessing. It's blessing me. It's definitely blessing me. So I, I pray it's blessing you guys as well. But um, stay tuned for the next couple of videos. We'll be doing chapters 49 and 50. Then we'll be moving on to Exodus. And as always, if you guys want to join in and, you know, you want to help us out, you want to read the chapter and come with your points and discuss them with us as well, you're open to that. Just let us know it beforehand and we'll let you know what chapters we're going to be doing. And then we'll invite you to the stream and we'll do it like that. But um, outside of that, you guys be blessed and be encouraged. In Jesus' name, we'll see you guys probably next week.